Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a special guest. It's David Morgan, also known as the Silver Guru. How you doing, Mr. David? I'm doing fine, Chris. Thank you. I've been wanting to have you on the show. Two reasons. You have a, a brand new website that's called Silver Sunrise, and it's got everything on there that people are going to see about silver and, and money and all the all the stuff that you've been into and been called to show the world what's up. So I want to show you guys that. But first, I've been watching Silver. I did a video on the breakout of Silver. And, you know, just real quick, it's God's money. Put it in the ground for us to use. And we've been ripped off by fake fiat currency. Now, where do you see it going, Mr. David? Well, I see it going one of two ways, Chris. I see it being probably the easiest, best, and most powerful way for we the people to assert our mon our power, put it in the monetary system where it counts the most, and uh, move on majestically into a bright new future. And that's kind of the basis of the movie documentary Silver Sunrise. On the other hand, if we don't get enough education and enough momentum and enough participation, we're going to be under the yoke of a slave system that's never been encountered before. If you think it was bad uh, in the slavery days of the United States and other parts of the world, by the way, um, that is uh, mediocre relative to the thought police that will take control of the new system. So I think we've got a fork in the road, Chris. I don't think it's going to, I don't think there's a middle road here. I think it's either we restore our freedom, our sovereignty, and our ability to be free, or we go down a road of uh, totalitarian control using AI. It's really technocracy. It's really not communism. It's based on the algorithms and the thought police will be computer programs. And you're not going to be able to argue with a human being or go into the county courthouse and lay out your case. You're going to be arguing with uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and it's got, you know, it's not even human and it's going to make the final vote for you. So it's very Orwellian future, but we don't have to be there. We can uh, make our own moves. So you're optimistic that the book 1984 isn't their playbook. Uh, it's, it might be their playbook, but they're not going to win. You're still, you've got hope that silver uh, does what it's supposed to do and it preserves people's wealth. Well, yeah, I, I would say it slightly differently, Chris. I would say one, you're right uh, verbatim that 1984 might be an outline of the future and they're, what they're striving to do, but we win. So I'll <clears throat> restate that. And the other one, it's we the people. It's the power of the people. It's the human spirit. It's our, it's our higher selves, our God-given right, whatever you want to talk about. However you want to, that's how I want to frame it rather than the money issue. Money is just um, a means of transaction. It should be honest and fair and basically a level playing field for everyone. But if you really want to analyze what makes the world go around, it's not money. It's energy. So there's a lot to it. Uh, I don't we can go down the energy road if you'd like, but the most important part is the creative ability to co-create with the creator to make our own way and basically remain sovereign. In other words, we maintain our freedom as individuals. You know, two laws. Do everything you say you're going to do. Law number one. Law number two, do not infringe on the rights or property of anyone else. Pretty simple. That's really the two things that we need. And we don't have to have another 5,827 laws or mandates or rules or conditions. Really, we have to keep it really simple. And we got to get back to an honest system. Part of the dishonesty, as you well know, is the monetary system is based on a fraud that certain elite powers are allowed to get something for nothing and force us to use it. And they get to create it basically for free. We well, want God to hates different scales, order. right? I'm sorry to mean to cut you right. off. That's right. Um, and, and when did that happen? When, when did the scales differ? Was it um, when they took us off the gold standard? Is that when it happened? That's when they took us? Well, that's a question for an academic. I mean, I'll go through it real quickly. Well, I, mean, I just want to, you to expand your thoughts. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I'm not trying to pick on you. you ask, <laughs> don't ask the easy questions. 
So you can go back to the Roman Empire and they, you know, debased the currency. That's probably where the word came from because you know, had a, a sovereign coin that was almost all silver and it just got diluted with base metal more and more and more and more and more until it was basically worthless. It was, you know, a coin that just was silver plated. And they pretended like a silver plated coin was of the same value as a pure silver coin. And of course they're not. Of course the inflation ensued all along that way. So that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is when you basically cut off any association with honest money, which happened in, you know, 1872 with the crime uh, of, you know, taking silver as a demonetization or it's no longer effectively used for payment to the government. Um, and of course it did circulate and, and that didn't last too long. I mean, silver has been money for more places, longer times of transactions than gold by far. And that really, you could argue, maintained up through 1964 in the United States and from 65 on, it was persona non grata and Gershom's law took effect and silver coinage got hoarded and not spent. And that's been the case in other jurisdictions as well. So there's lots of ways to look at it, but basically, when the only thing you can use, when Gershom's Law takes over, I think is the best way to explain it. So even in the Roman Empire, people that saw what was coming would take the more, you know, the silver coins that had the most silver and hoard them and spend the new ones that had less silver because that's good money, you know, chasing out bad money. And bad money being spent. Right. Yeah. I was, uh, I mentioned that as in a really simple, I wasn't trying to ask an academic question. <laughs> this is what happens when I talk to Mr. David Morgan. He's very intelligent. He's, he's a wordsmith. Oh, and I just happen to be a good old country boy. So uh, you're, you're a great man. You are really a good, you're a good guy. Well, thank we you. We need buddy. more like you. You know, that's what made this country great. With people that do their best all the time, shoot straight, do what they say they're going to do. Rule number one. And don't infringe on the rights of others. Rule number two. And you probably live that naturally. And I think a lot of us live that way naturally. Um, way, 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 way far away from it. my uh yeah, well, talking about me is my one of my biggest flaws is probably expecting somebody to be what they say they are. Mm. It's a strange it should be that way. And some people would call me gullible. And the reason I say that is because when you talk about precious metals, a lot of people say, Oh, they think scam immediately. You know, because there's been so many people ripped off in the precious metal space with the numismatics coin and all this other stuff. But guys, I just want to—I want to have people like Mr. David Morgan on, and we'll show you his his uh, well, your website where all your your stuffs on. And G. Edward Griffin is on here. I'll actually share it with you right now. Yeah. Because when you go here, it'll be in the description. I, I, I'm I'm willing to help Mr. David uh, with anything because I know he's a good person. And he wants the best and he wants real money. And God put this on his heart to show people, hey, this is this is real. This will come to pass. The 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 people that run the government do the same. They do the same mistake over and over. They print too much money. That's just part of it. And as you go through the synopsis, this will spell out. I'm not gonna read it to you, it'd be a nightmare to hear me. Mr. David might want to read it. You want to read the synopsis to everybody? Or well, give them a story? I just want to set the framework for everybody. So I've written three books. And uh, <clears throat> there are mostly about silver. The first one's uh, Get the Skinny on Silver Investing. It's just a primer. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I wrote the Silver Manifesto with Chris Marchese. That's kind of an academic read. It's a pretty thick book. Uh, it goes through uh, the history of silver and why silver is manipulated, proving that it is how to pick a silver or gold company. I mean, there's a lot in that book. And then the last one is uh, really an investor's guide. It's called um, Second Chance, How to Pop from the Coming Tsunami in Gold and Silver. And that was written by David Smith and I. And I've had people say, and David wrote most of it. I did most of the editing. He, um, they have told me it's the best investment book they ever read. So the third one. But I said I didn't really want to write another book. People don't read. So what did I want to do? And I came up with this idea of doing a documentary on the monetary problem and solutions. So that's what this website is. This isn't the morganreport.com, my bread and butter, free and private newsletter. It is a splash page for a documentary that I'm making. And before I forget, I do need donations. We're kind of at a standstill. The script has been written. I paid for it. 
the treatment's been done. I paid for that. I paid for everything so far. And I have gotten some do donations, and I'm grateful for everyone that has helped me. But we're kind of at a need for further funding to get our interviews done. So we've got uh, G. Edward Griffin in the can. He's already been interviewed. Uh, he's already been asked all these questions and great answers. There's some excerpts here that you can see for free. Uh, we are lining up David Icke. Very controversial, but David has said a lot about a lot of things. I don't agree with all of his stuff. I certainly admire his. His straightforwardness, his guts, his sticking to principles, and he has a lot to say about the monetary system. He is next. That's in the UK. It takes a little bit of money to get over there and film him, but we will. And then we have several others lined up. I also got um, Foster Gamble, who did the uh, Thrive series, both Thrive 1 and Thrive 2. We're personal friends. He said he'd be honored to be in this documentary. So again, it's about the stress of money. If you type into Google, what's the number one stressor of people on the planet? About 80, 85% of the people stress about their finances. And it's not just people that are poor that can't make ends meet, which is a great deal of Americans and a great deal of the world's populations. But Chris, it's also people with a lot of money because they're worried about who are the real friends or who's trying to take it from them or what scam are they going to fall into or are they going to be tax death or, you know. And so money is a big issue. It transcends, you know, nation states and jurisdictions and political beliefs and religious beliefs and, you know, sex, you know, identification. <laughs> it transcends everything. Everyone's concerned with their money. And if the money's going to fail, and it is, then what's the solution? And that's really what this documentary is about. And part of it is the energy situation. And there's been energy suppression along the way. And there's a film by Stephen Greer that's known mostly as an expert in UFOs, but he did one, The Lost Century. And in my opinion, and I've, I've bought the movie, I've probably watched it four times, I'll probably watch another four or five, but The Lost Century has to do not so much with free energy, because uh, that's a kind of a woo thing a lot of people don't believe in, and as a trained engineer, I'm not supposed to, but so many that were on the table, absolute factual, means of uh, generating energy that would be beneficial to mankind that either got bought out by large corporations and put on the shelf, or maybe the inventor was uh, eating the wrong food at the wrong time or uh, playing, got a lead ache and couldn't recover from it and follow my drift. So uh, that's going to be part of the movie as well, because we are in a situation where we've got to push back and push back hard. It's sort of that, like, we can't go half in anymore. I mean, some people can, but, you know, you're all in, I'm all in, and it's not because I've got um, that kind of courage. It's almost been forced upon me because I don't see any way to soft pedal this anymore. We've got to give it all we've got because, as I said earlier, I think the road is heavily divided. Do you want an AI slave state or do you want to be a free human being? I want to. I wanted to share something with you. I accidentally put the wrong screen on before, but when you're when you're saying the fraud is just getting started, everybody that's listening, check out the CBDC tracker. You can go to this website and it will show you what's going on with the CBDCs. And I'm not going to get all into this, but we're not going to make a video about this, but I just wanted to, to show you that there is a tracker and you can see that 98% of the world, 98% of the global GDP is involved in developing a CBDC. And this is getting confused with credit cards and stuff that's already here, but this anything but it's total control. It literally 1984, uh, you know, the book. It's 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 crazy how that it has played out. But this central digital central bank digital currency, the only real way we have to fight against it is have real money, or you're going to be, you know, you're going to have to deal with that, and we're all going to have to deal with it. I think we're going to use it. Do you think we're all going to be using the CBDC right, just like we do cash now? Well, certainly that's the plan and that's the push. And uh, I think we will see it in you know, the not too distant future. I don't think everyone will adopt it. 
I think there'll be some that just won't, but they'll, the majority probably will. Um, it's hard to say, uh, you know, what exactly will happen, Chris. I mean, Oh yeah. Well, I agree. But, but, yeah. I mean, we both agree on that. I, I know what they want and then you showed it. And a lot of people don't even know what's going on to them. It's just a different bank account. Who cares? You know, or they have to give a different ID. They have to give an Irish scan or, you know, a DNA sample or something to get involved or some kind of a uh, computer identification that, uh, we really know who you are. I mean, basically, there's a lot of unbanked people. These are people that live their lives without a bank account. That's going away. You're going to either be in the system route, and this could go all the way to the Bible if you're so inclined. Not everyone, you know, looks at it that way, but some do. And it could be, you know, you're in the new system or you're not. It's a mark that you got to take. And that could be an agreement. It could be something to tattoo. It could be a number of things. I don't look at it as being necessarily a physical mark, although it could be. It's really a system. And this is the system that we're up against. You know, some call it the B system. And this is what they're showing us. They're not hiding it. They're putting it out. I mean, there's your, you know, the graphic you just showed with the CDC, CBDC on a world basis and where it is and where it's implemented and how much transactions are done and all these things. The thing about the BRICS, as well, it's a way to mitigate the U.S. dollar. Well, in theory, it is. But if you look at the ISO, I think it's ISO 20022, they're all on the same page as far as how their new system is going to be implemented. And it's they're all in bed together. You know, if you go back to the illness, the BRICS weren't uh, people that said, no, no, this is a fraud perpetuated by the World Health Organization and we're not going to participate. That's not what happened at all. Everybody jumped in the same thing. So these powers that be are basically on a globalist system still, although there is some perhaps breaking away. It's really tough in a Hegelian dialectic because they set up both sides with a solution already pre-planned and make it look as if there was a struggle to get to the new solution. And a lot of people still fall for that. Yours truly. I mean, I can make an argument that there is some real pushback on the U.S. dollar system, but is it all theater? Yeah, it probably is all theater. Okay, that there's two things that I want everybody to take away, and that is Silver Sunrise TV. Check it out. Mr. David's a good guy, and he's out to do the right thing. You can bank on that. And the other thing, I'm going to show you one more time, is the Central Bank Digital Currency Tracker, Atlantic Council, okay? This is a big deal. It's it's in the mail, okay? And as you scroll through here, you're going to see a, a map of what systems are doing what, what they plan on doing. I mean, this is really interesting, guys. And we're talking we're talking 90 98% of GDP are exploring CBDC. And uh, the list goes on. You can read all the key findings. It's AtlanticCouncil.org. And hey, uh, Stacy, it's okay. In just a second, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, so check that out, please. And also check out uh, the Silver Sunrise TV because that's that's really cool. I'm looking forward to see what you come up with. Uh, uh, everybody likes a good movie. Especially yeah. around sound money, right? Right. Yep. So, uh, before I let you go, do you can you bless us with a prediction for silver? Do you have any predictions you want to whip up and put your name on? Okay. Yeah, I will. Um, you know, I do technical work as well as fundamental analysis, and I'm actually fairly good at it. It's uh, it's an art, <laughs> not a science, <clears throat> but. Um, once we get above a 30 print, we stay there. In other words, 30 becomes support, not resistance. We should start really seeing some big moves in the silver market. There's not a lot of upside resistance above 30. The yeah, other people that bought at 32, 3, and 35, and even 48, but not many. It wasn't at those levels for very long. And because of that, there's not a lot of people that want to sell back at 35 or 40 or 45. So we will see any new buying. Plus, there'll be kind of a new attitude, sort of that, you know, Super Bowl game or, you know, I'll just use that analogy. And you're the underdog and you made it to halftime and 
you finally scored, but you're, you know, three touchdowns down, but at least you know you can score in these down other team. And once you come out and you get the ball and you score really fast again, now you're only two touchdowns down and you've got, you know, another 55 minutes left on the clock. Excuse me, you got another uh, 25 minutes left on the clock. Uh, you only use five minutes of the new half and you're coming on strong. That's an analogy for, I think, how Silver will go. And then all of a sudden, you get the ball back on a fumble and you one touchdown down, and that only took, you know, three plays. So Silver will accelerate at some point, and I think it's above 30. So that's the long-term pitcher. Will that happen this year? I think it could start above 30 this year. I don't know. It's been tough, Chris, because um, Silver usually participates a little better than it has with gold doing what it's doing. Usually when gold starts making a new high, you'll see silver start to accelerate. And it has very slightly. If you go back on a weekly basis, uh, a week and a half ago, uh, gold was up 5% for the week and silver was up over 10. So it was twice as good. But it's only one week's worth of data. So, but that's the idea. We'll see an acceleration in silver. I think so. I think you're right. The silver to gold ratio is still around 85. So that's a... That's... <laughs> That's it's pretty low, guys. That's a deal. It's like the most undervalued asset on the planet. <laughs> we got to have 1.2 billion ounces by 2025, right? Is that the deficit still? Well, that I will go into that. That's a tough one to really ferret out. Because, Pin down. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming on, Mr. David. You're welcome anytime. Check out Silver Sunrise TV. It'll be in the description. And have an awesome, awesome day. Later, bud. Thank you.